cold air going through, and birds occasionally. Basically, what you have here is quite obviously a uh, column experiment. What I'm trying to work out is what the effect retention time has on the ability of my material to remove nitrate pollution. That is the time taken uh, for the, the uh, nitrate to remain in the barrier. To change that, you've got to change the thickness of the barrier, so effectively the amount it has to flow through, or the flow rate, or the concentration. So, when you're looking at a natural system, you're talking about a scenario where, say, in winter or during a storm event, the flow rate will suddenly increase massively within a matter of minutes and continue so for a few hours. At the same time, the concentration will increase because effectively you're suddenly washing the land to get all the uh, pollution off. So, what this scenario you see before you is really where I'm trying to uh, create a lab example of that. So what you hear, have here is the low flow columns. These are the ones where the uh, flow rate is constantly at a low level. And what happens is I put a spike, a peak of uh, concentration through very suddenly to mimic that storm event, but I don't vary the flow rate. These ones are where I'm having a much more rapid flow rate. And I uh, run these again for the same amount of time as these and put the same spike through so effectively you've got the scenario where it's low flow rate spike and high flow rate spike so I get a feel for if there's a high flow rate with this thickness how well it'll cope with the chemical increase in comparison to this and then we have scenario three which is a little bit different and these are the spike columns and this is where I actually start with the flow rate equivalent to the low flow and when I increase the concentration, so put the spike through again, I also increase the flow rate to the high flow scenario. So basically I'm covering three possible solutions. One, the flow rate doesn't change but the concentration changes. And the second, where the flow rate and the concentration changes. And hopefully the result I'll see is these are the more effective at removing nitrate in both scenarios. And what I hopefully will see here, which is the interesting one, is that uh, it will be far better at removing the nitrate than this one where the flow rate is always constantly high. So hopefully we should see that. Unfortunately, no data yet. <laughs> this is my final sample. I'm actually stopping the experiment today. So almost finished. It takes about an hour for the samples to come off the slow ones and about 15 minutes to come off the high ones. So to prevent flooding, I stagger it a little. Okay.